Our top story, Singapore's parliament has kicked off its annual debate on the national budget. And on opening day, MPs focused on the schemes that were announced to help the lower income, the elderly and small businesses. MPs have described Budget 2012 as a budget for the future, while for others, it's a caring budget. Under it, the government will spend about $5.5 billion over the next five years to help the less well-off in Singapore. Its new initiatives targeted at the elderly, disabled and lower income group. So it was no surprise that in nearly every speech delivered today, the plight of two groups of Singaporeans, the elderly and the low income, were addressed. While I'm sure that they appreciate the rebates, the vouchers and so on that the government offers from time to time, I think that there is a need for closer examination of where each dollar of a low-wage worker earns goes to. In this budget, the finance minister course-corrected to ensure that our poor, elderly and disabled are not stuck in isolated pockets of poverty in our island of prosperity. Let us all agree to never allow the formation of a permanent underclass. MPs said the announced cuts to the proportion of foreign workers companies can hire would make available job opportunities to locals. Single mothers will benefit from these changes in particular. Since they have to shoulder both work and family responsibility on their own, many need a workplace that provides flexible work arrangements while bringing home a regular income. Also welcome the government's decision to increase the CPF contributions for older workers from the 1st of September this year. MPs say for businesses there are two concerns from the feedback received. First, in the light of the current economic climate, businesses are concerned about the cost of doing business in Singapore, among them land costs. The second area of concern is a bigger one, the tightening of the quotas for the hiring of foreign workers. Opposition MP Chen Shomao suggested that the government have different industry clusters for setting dependency ratio ceilings. The dependency ratio ceilings specify the maximum proportion of foreign workers that companies can hire. One cluster could comprise industries that have high productivity and generate good jobs for Singaporeans. For example, finance, aerospace, biomedical and professional services. For these industries, we may have more stringent foreign manpower policies so that foreign workers complement and not substitute Singaporeans. Others suggested that more be done for the SMEs to innovate and increase productivity. What is important, however, is to ensure that access to these funds and support is simple so that companies that most need it are able to access it and enjoy the release and obtain the funds when they need it. This is where I feel improvements must be done. The House continues debating the budget on Wednesday.